Um, so talk to me a little bit about uh, how far away we are maybe from getting to maybe clinical trials. What, what work is there left to do? Absolutely. That's an excellent question. Um, so right now, the Elaine 3 clinical trial is, uh, I think, finished recruiting and hopefully soon starting to treat patients. Um, and that will be testing lasofoxifene and abemocyclob versus fulvestrant and abemocyclob, which is already an approved combination. Um, so we'll see what that what those results look like. Um, those patients will likely have bone metastasis and other visceral organ metastases um, or advanced recurrence. Uh, so hopefully with the data that's collected from that trial, um, we can start to stratify patients based on metastatic sites uh, and see if there is a true benefit for lasofoxifene in the bone microenvironment. Um, and after that, I think that there will be many more clinical trials with lasofoxifene. Um, I'm really interested in how it acts, behaves in the bone microenvironment, but um, I think that there's a lot of clinical potential for this compound to possibly replace tamoxifen as um, an adjuvant therapy uh, because it has a lower side effect profile. It's bone protective. Um, it also doesn't increase uterine hyperplasia, which we see a lot um, in the clinic patients treated with tamoxifen. Mm. So when we talk about breast cancer a lot, a conversation that we often have is um, about epigenetics and how different people respond differently to different treatments. And, Absolutely. And it has, has there been any conversation when it comes to bone metastasis of how um, outcomes might differ among people with maybe different gene factors or are there demographic factors or other things that kind of, you know, impact patient outcomes or even response to? Uh, Absolutely. That's an excellent question. Um, in the metastatic setting, unfortunately, we know so little. Um, bone metastasis is a very difficult field to study. Um, so there's not a whole lot of stratification. Um, in the metastatic setting. But in the primary tumor setting, we know that there are different subtypes of breast cancer that are ER positive. So there's luminal A and luminal B, lobular breast cancer. Um, and, you know, we really don't know very much about lasofoxifene. We're still learning a lot about it. Um, but it's, it's an important question to ask. And I think that um, as we, you know, progress through clinical trials and have um, more research done in the preclinical setting as well, that we'll hopefully identify some markers or some way to see which patients will benefit clinically um, from different treatments like lasofoxifene. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, uh, estrogen receptor modulators um, are very effective at downregulating estrogen signaling in the cancer cells. So hopefully mm -hmm. we'll be able to um, expand the patient population that is receiving treatments like this. So... What led you to focus on lasofoxifene specifically? Absolutely. Um, so lasofoxifene is a new generation estrogen receptor modulator, or CIRM. Um, tamoxifen is a CIRM that has been prescribed since the 70s and 80s. It has been kind of a standard of care adjuvant therapy for many, many years. And so we were really excited about an estrogen receptor modulator that might improve upon the pharmacology of you know, older generation compounds, um, and specifically lasofoxifene because we knew that it was bone protective. Um, like I said, it's, you know, it's proved for osteoporosis treatment in some countries um, and has shown clinical efficacy in phase two trials with the FDA um, at decreasing ER-positive breast cancer burden. 